All right, we're going to go ahead then and pick up here with part B of this example number two, where we were talking about snap beans and the thrilling storage, storage methods, methods that uh, were discussed there. Okay, so let's take a look at what we got here. We were able to conclude in the last question that it seemed like the new method was like probably a, definitely superior to this old method because, again, look at how low that p-value was. The chances of being this much better by just chance is like super, super, super low. So one of the questions that we might have is, well, if we think that the new method is better, how much better do we think that it is? So we're going to see to test or we're going to test to see if the difference between the amount of ascorbic acid retained using the new method versus the old method is greater than 32. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and start to set up my hypotheses using the same symbols that I did in the last portion of this example. Although what I'll notice here is that I'm actually going to have to jump immediately to green hypotheses. Because here, I'm testing to see if the difference between mean 1 and mean 2 is either equal to 32 or if that difference is greater than 32. It's actually not really possible to write down these hypotheses with only mean 1 and mean 2. I have to have this number 32 in there. And since the problem describes this using a difference, I'll use the same thing. Now, by itself, this doesn't really pose any sort of an issue. We can still go ahead and list out all of our givens just like we did before. In fact, I'll go ahead and do that here. My evidence is, again, completely the same. My X bar 1 is still 450. My S1 is 20. My N1 is 100. X bar 2 is 410. S2 was 45. N2 was 150. X bar 1 minus X bar 2 is still 40. But now, something is very different. This time, the value of delta is not 0. The value of delta is 32. It's at exactly this moment when we're going to have a slight problem. Now, before we address that problem, I'll just go back and reconfirm the checks. N1 is greater than or equal to 30. N2 is greater than or equal to 30. Both these things work. We're good to proceed. But here's the tough part. If you remember what you did in example 2a in the last video, and if you practiced example 1 like I asked, then you would have maybe noticed that nowhere in that calculator entry or in that, in that calculator test, was there a spot to enter the value of delta zero? So this becomes a huge problem. And I'm going to write this in a very important note. When delta zero is not a zero, when it's something else, you cannot use the calculator test unless you are clever because the calculator and that test never asked you what delta zero is so i'm going to have to come up with a way to get the calculator to incorporate a value of delta zero even though the calculator never asked me for a value of delta zero so this is kind of weird. I have to kind of understand what is the calculator going to be doing when it makes these computations. So I'll show you really quickly how I can actually determine this. And it requires taking a look at that formula on the formula sheet. So if I look at this formula over here, you can see that what the calculator is going to be, with all those values that I tell it, it's going to be computing this t-score that I have over here. And you'll see up in the top, I have this minus delta zero that the calculator kind of just always ignores. It always just pretends that it's a zero and that essentially that value just isn't there. But of course, we want that value to be there. So what's kind of interesting is to notice that in that numerator of that fraction, those parentheses don't really do anything. If you want to, you could just rewrite that numerator as x bar 1 minus x bar 2 minus delta zero. And herein lies the trick. 
the calculator right now is only going to assume we're going to do x bar 1 and take away x bar 2. But we want to also take away delta 0. So here's what I'm going to propose. I propose that we lie to the calculator. Specifically, we lie to the calculator about the value of x bar number 2. And if we wanted the calculator to subtract regular x bar 2 and delta, why don't we bundle those values together first, and then the calculator will take all of them away at once. This would be a really good strategy. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of write that out on here. I'll say for x bar 2 on the calculator, we should enter that x bar 2 plus delta 0, which would be our 410 plus our 32, 442. That way, when the calculator subtracts those val the subtracts that value 442, it's technically subtracting the 410 and the 32 at the same moment. Once I do that, I'll be able to get the t-score, and then I'll be able to set up everything else that I typically have down here. Remember, that's going to be x bar 1 minus x bar 2s on a number line. They fall into a nice t distribution. We expect to get 0. But remember that instead, we got the value of 40. Now, this is what we had in the last question. And we were curious if 40 was too high. But in this question, what we've updated is actually we don't have this value of 0 anymore. Because based on what H0 says, what do we believe will happen when we subtract x bar 1 from or, or x bar 2 from x bar 1? That says I would expect to get the value now 32. So that's the value that goes here. And then, of course, I have my t-scores. And I can label this thing here as my p-value. I know that I would calculate that. It's probability that x bar 1 minus x bar 2 is still greater than 40. So let's see how the calculator will adjust for this when I lie to it about the x bar 2 entry, and then see how this adjusts maybe my conclusion here on this question. All right, so let's see. I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to tests. I'm going to go down and find that two sample. Oh, wait. Where was that? Two sample t test. There it is. Oh, number four. Wow. Couldn't find it there for a moment. Okay. So let's see. Notice again, the calculator doesn't ask me for that delta zero. So I'm going to go to the x bar two and I'm going to lie. Notice I can actually just type these two values in just like this. And when I scroll down, the calculator will automatically add them together. Notice that nothing else in the question really needs to be changed. I'm even still going to tell the calculator that I had a mean one greater than a mean two. This Technically, that's still true. And when I go down and I hit calculate, I'll see that I get a very different t-score value. Oops, that's a 4 there. And the p-value now is very small, 0 0.0286. But it doesn't appear to be smaller than the value of alpha, which was given as 0 0.01. So in this case, I would say that I have a sample that is not rare. And so I do not reject age naught. So I'm going to write out my conclusion in the same way that I always do. It is common to see a difference of sample averages of 40 by chance if the real difference is 32. Therefore, 
we have no reason to doubt that the average, or I should say that the difference between the overall averages is 32. I don't have any reason to doubt H0. Okay, so that uh, at least wraps up this uh, this portion of this example. And this is kind of illustrating again, what do I do when I have this delta zero value that ultimately uh, isn't a zero and is some other number? I have to make sure that I'm able to lie to the calculator sufficiently to complete that type of question. All right, in the next video, we'll take a look at the last question in this section, which is example number three, and how do I actually go ahead and do a hypothesis test using a confidence interval in this section?